Hey guys, I wanted to show you something kind of cool. A little bit of a humble brag, but um, yeah, so I'm opening this gym. Right? I'd be sketched out. So people are coming up these stairs. They're like, oh my God, what am I doing? This looks so sketchy. Look at these bars and these windows. Oh my God. What am I getting into? These are all $500 bills. So, you can sell wherever you want. So, uh, don't let that stop you. What is your goal in life? To do epic shit. Genuinely. To be useful. Because when I look back on my life in retrospect, the things that bring me the most joy in the moment are the things that I was willing to sacrifice for for an extended period of time. And those pay memory dividends far greater than the momentary cost that I had at the moment. Uh, there's a, a tweet that I made. Actually, you, you were the one who made it go viral. You don't build confidence by shouting affirmations in the mirror, but by stacking... I mean, by Having stack. an undeniable stack of proof that you are who you say you Thank are. Thank you. That's Outwork yourself out. Thank yeah. you. There. <laughs> uh, mother was born in France, came here. Father was born in Iran. Um, they met in medical school in Europe. Uh, and then my mother brought him back with her <laughs> to the U.S. They had me. Uh, they split. My mom had a lot of demons. She had a lot of things she struggled with when I was coming up. So I pretty much was raised by my dad. I worked hard at school, mostly because I just didn't want my dad to be upset with me, which was uh, the main driver for most of my achievement in my career for the first half. Um, was all just trying to gain his approval. Um, did all the things that I thought he would want me to. Got a job at a government contracting. Uh, consulting firm. Sounded really cool. Was less cool <laughs> when you were in it. Um, and I was very, very sad um, at that point in my life. And so it was very much like I didn't, I always hoped I wouldn't wake up the next day. Um, Do and you it mean was that? Truly. You really mean that? A hundred percent. I think the like, the one line summary for me was that like, I felt like I had to let my dad's dream die for mine to live. And I had told him over and over again that I wanted to do this other stuff. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. later, you know, later. Um, and so I knew that it would probably put a big dent in our relationship um, if I left. But for me, it was actually confronting the fact that I didn't want to be alive anymore, which was the thing that gave me enough courage or whatever you want to call it to actually make the decision to leave home. I hated being one of those people who like talked about all the things they were going to do and didn't do anything. I hated living the life that my dad wanted me to live. I was, I was his bitch. That's what it was. I was his bitch. I was living his dreams out, not mine. I ended up quitting that job, sold everything I had, packed my car, went to California, because that's where I thought the land of fitness opportunity was. And I drove straight uh, to California from Baltimore, which is where I was. And when I was sleeping on the gym floor, I'll give you a detail that, that, that'll tell you that the, unst the stack of undeniable proof. I slept on the gym floor. That's my first gym in Huntington Beach. I lived out of my car. I shot at LA Fitness. Hey guys, I wanted to show you something kind of cool. A little bit of a humble brag, but um, yeah, so I'm opening this gym in kind of the middle of nowhere. So I rented one room in a house for 400 bucks a month. And then when I left that room to start sleeping at the gym, which was an hour away because I couldn't make the commute, so I saved 400 bucks a month. I remember being actually kind of excited about it. I remember being like, man, I'm, this is going to be a adventure. sick story. Yeah, yeah this, is gonna be a, I'm gonna be, this is my Rocky cut scene, right? The thing is that the Rocky cutscene lasts 30 seconds in the movie, but it can last five years in your life. Like, what is this? Like, ah, I'm saying, yeah, this is gonna be a gym. It's gonna be amazing. Look, we got... And probably the most painful from an emotional perspective experience that I would have on a regular basis was that it was also a abandoned enough parking lot that college kids, kids my age, would go up and party on the roof. Here's some stuff. Here's some stuff. What's going on? And so like while they were partying literally above my head and making noise that would prevent me from sleeping, 
I would be down below in, an inc in a dark warehouse in a city that I knew no one. I literally knew no one and no one knew me. And I, I bring this up because like the visceral feeling that you go through when you're going through the mound of shit period or the shit eating, <laughs> what feels like a marathon, it becomes a 30 second soundbite in my story. These are all $500 bills. So you can sell wherever you want. So uh, don't let that stop you. I remember selling the entire first month and making exactly $4,973, which is the exact amount of the rent. And so then I just watched it go back down to zero and I was like, this sucks. And I remember working like a dog to get that. I'd never made money in my life. Like I'd never like really asked anyone for money. And all of a sudden I had to come up $5,000 in a month. And then at the end of the month, I watched it go to zero. And then I was like, I have to do it again. Um, but the next month we made 10 grand, the next month we made 15, then 20, then 20. It was like five grand a month, all the way up to like 35,000 a month, pretty much by month. Then um, I started hiring people and bringing people in. And then at by month like nine, it was, it was all outsourced. I felt my first nine businesses didn't really amount to anything. First one, spent time, fucking failed. Everyone is telling you, I told you so, and they're right today, but not forever. I think that's okay. Have you had to work on that? Layla's better. I just, I wanted someone who got my peculiarities, yeah. who was like, not only like accepting of them, but just like down for it. Now, do you remember swiping on Alex's profile? Mm -hmm. What was what that? What was it like? What set that apart? <laughs> well, <part? laughs> <laughs> it was a picture of a guy with a six pack. Oh but I was like, ooh, business and fitness. Like that sounds like me too. So that was why I swiped. You know, when I met Alex, he literally fit the bill for like every single thing that I've been looking for in someone. And I just knew. <laughs> uh, and I just knew that like, I'm like, Leila, if he matches everything that you've been looking for, like why are you waiting on this? Like, just do it. Within the first week of us, of us being together, I was like, you should, you should quit your thing and work with me. I was just like, I'm gonna be working all day. You can work next to me if you want. And she was like, sure. And so that was what we did. I having lost everything. And the, my one Hail Mary play of this launch, the money did not come through. And I was like, I, I think you should leave me. And so I had this idea for the turnaround business and it was right as I had five, five locations at that point and I wanted to try this thing out. So I flew out, did three turnarounds, flew back. Um, I sold all my gyms because it was like, okay, this, this makes even more money. I took all the money and put it into uh, this gym that one of the guys I was doing a turnaround with was like, dude, you just crushed this. Like I'm a really good operator. Instead of turning his gyms around and walking away with just the money, he's like, you should just keep owning them. And so I crushed this launch and then I wake up one morning, I check the bank account and uh, it's completely empty. And I was like, what's happening? So I, I printed all the bank, the bank statements. I went line by line. I was like, let me, I'll, I'll walk you through all the bank statements. Let's just, let's get to the bottom of this. And I remember we went, sat to the meeting and he was like, oh, I don't need to see that. And he pushed it off the table and I was like, oh, okay. I immediately was like, oh, he, I just got fucked. And so I'm at her parents' house, like in, in an extra bedroom, having lost everything. And the, my one Hail Mary play of this launch, the money did not come through. And I was like, I, I think you should leave me. Um, I, I think I am a, a sinking ship right now. And I would respect you, like we're cool, if you wanna walk away.
And um, she pulled my chin towards her and she was like, I would sleep with you under a bridge if it came to that. And it's hard to comprehend, but like I had nothing. <laughs> you know, like for her to have that kind of belief was, was very, uh, it was deep. So it was like, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> And I think that's what most guys want. True. At least for me. That's what I want. She just, she believed in me. Our first full 12 months, uh, we did 26 million top line, wow. 17 million in EBITDA. Our first 12 months, like it was, it was, and then it just took off like wildfire. What's going on, everyone? What's going on, everyone? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. This guy is popping up all over my YouTube all of a sudden. What the hell is going on? My wife and I acquired a $100 million net worth by the time we were age 32. Probably gonna piss a lot of people off in this video. Success comes down to doing the obvious thing for an extraordinary period of time without convincing yourself you're smarter than you are. I work all the time. I have no hobbies besides working out, if you can consider that a hobby. Like, I do as much as I can of the thing that I want to do every minute of my day. Alex, you're an idiot. All of your business advice is terrible. I'd be like, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> and then you just keep living your life. Different understand that you just need to do it better. Output comes from volume times leverage. You must do more and get more from what you do. The way you get more from what you do is you first do everything that you know you should be doing better. The way you do that is to focus on one thing for a long time without distraction. Anything can become big with time. When you line all actions to a single outcome and you keep working at it, your success will look effortless and obvious from the outside, but you will know that it came from years of saying no to everything except that which mattered most. You're not afraid of failing. You're afraid of what other people will think of you if you fail. But if you're afraid of that, imagine what they think of you when you aren't even trying. Oh yeah, they aren't. <laughs> I'm such a dick sometimes. Oh Lord, I feel like I'm dead.